What's up, man? It's your boy Bodie and BD Mix, man. Better known as the most hated favorite engineer, FBG Cash Engineer, Do or Die Engineer. One of the best in the city. I'm trying to interview. I ain't got your nuts out. I ain't got my nuts out. Right. <laughs> hey, it happens. Okay, so tell us where you from. I'm from the northwest side of Chicago. You feel me? Like I'm from I'm from Chicago, man. But I learned all my tricks and trades down in Atlanta, so. I say I'm a I'm a shy Atlanta ass nigga. You were living in Atlanta. Yeah, I lived in Atlanta for like three, four years. Hell yeah. What what span of time was that? Like two thousand what? That was two thousand fifteen to two thousand eighteen. Hell yeah. So semi kind of earliest. You're like yeah, halfway through. Really? Like halfway through. Hell yeah. You like lived in Chicago pretty much for most of your life. Yeah, I was born like my my birth certificate says. Illinois Masonic, but I was born in downtown Chicago, so it was, yeah, I was, I was born out here. So did you start music off in Atlanta, or was it just kind of like I started? I started off. I started off in Chicago, and I started off doing a lot of work with Do or Die. But I felt like my my music wasn't gonna go nowhere doing anything in Chicago. Like I had a lot of affiliations with the wrong people. So taking music and trying to be serious with it while start while still doing the dumb shit I was doing, it really. It, it was a conflict of interest, so I decided... I, I was down in Orlando. I was doing a lot of work in Orlando, and I decided to leave Orlando, and I was on a five-hour layover in Atlanta. And I ended up linking up with Pastor Troy at, at Magic City, and, man, we hit the studio, and from there on out, I was just doing so much work. Motherfucking months go by, and I'm already getting a crib. um, moving around the A like it's, like it's home, so I ended up staying out there and getting my bags up. And Hell, yeah. Came back to Chicago. Well, man, is there like a what's the major difference between Chicago and Atlanta? There's a lot more love in Atlanta. Like, there's no there, there's hate. A lot of people, of course, anywhere you go, there's people gonna hate on you. But it's the fact that out there that they keep the music scene so tight knit that you don't gotta worry about going to the club and they shooting up the fucking club or big dumbass fight starting the club because they don't want their club shut down. They don't want to have to worry about a fight or somebody getting shot in their club and now they can't open up and now they losing. A, they really strictly on their bread. Like, they want to stick to their bread and get their bread. So, that's what I liked about Atlanta. Hell yeah. And it's an open, friendly state. Like, everybody out there is friendly. You you could, even if you're in a good mood, you walk by, you see, man, how, how you doing? Man, how you doing? You good? Yeah. Pleasure meeting you. I'll, I'll talk to you again sometime. Other spots, it's like, why fucking talk? Yeah, other people just look at you crazy. Like, my bad. I should have just, on, go about your day. So, with the, where, so, when you started in Atlanta, where does, like, the music take you back into Chicago? Man, I've always had close connections with Do or Die. Like, Do or Die, those are my big bros, those are my mentors. So, when they called me, I was already having family issues. So, I was, like, I was, down in the A, when you down there and you doing shit by yourself, and you literally stuck down there by yourself, you, you get homesick. So, when you start reaching out to your people back home, and they're telling you projects that they're doing, Shows going on, this and that, man. You think about it like, you know what? I'm coming back. So that was my mindset. I, man, I packed everything up, took my ass back to Chicago. And I was only supposed to stay there for a couple months. Like, I wanted to go help my mama out, help the guys out, get my bread, and take my ass back to Atlanta. But I ended up meeting my wife. We ended up having a baby. We got a crib together. So I started doing more and more projects with Jeremiah, my homie Murph Dilly. I was doing shit with Lil Fo. Like, I was doing so much, I never found time to be like, all right, I'm going to go back. So now it's... You stay busy. Yeah, so now it's like, okay, now I'm getting ready to get the fuck up out the city. I'm ready I'm ready to move up out of, out of the city already. But, you know, I still got a lot more work to do with Cash, Young, and Dutch. So eventually, I'm going to be gone. How is it working with them? Man, it's lit. Yeah? Good it's lit. Studio, always, always. Other than when, when, me, Kat, or when me, Young, and Dutch get too high and we be forgetting we be recording sometimes. We start talking and... <laughs> Just kicking it? Man, we start we start politicking and arguing you know, about shit. I feel like that's part of the music, though. It like, is. That energy helps make hits, bro. It is, you know what it is? It's always... Okay, so, like, we have a whole different style. When you come to you... We, we sit there and roast each other. Like, we talk hella shit to each other. But it's all in friendly competition. 
All in front of competition, just so man, shut the fuck up. Watch this. Ooh, or oh yeah, you think I do better? What? All right, cool. Let me do it like this. So it's always a good time. But when we get in the studio, we always book three, four hour studio sessions, right? Like, cause I'm the engineer, so I'm normally the one that got to book them hours. Yeah. We'll book for three, four hours. Next thing I know, we six, seven hours later. Like, all right, sun's coming up. Let's go home. What got you into the engineering? I got tired of engineers trying to tax me because they knew I was a beginner. Like, especially up in Chicago, people try to take advantage of that. But I didn't have nothing else to do. Like, you feel me? I, I got tattoos on my face. I had just, I, I was out doing dumb shit. I just came back from, like, it was a lot going on. So at that time, it was like, I ain't got nothing else to do. My homie, he, he's an engineer. He's from the south side. He's a super dope engineer. If y'all ever look up the legendary Ange 13, she's a, she's a, Female MC, like, got bars. He's her engineer. So he, like, got that old beatbox style. But being around him, I was like, okay, I started picking up stuff. And he gave me my first copy of Pro Tools. Main thing, he told me, go get a computer. Go get a computer. I'll hook you up with everything else. So I went and got me desktop. And like, Come on, hook it up. And next thing I know, I started learning from him. And then when I linked up with Do or Die, their producer, Dirty Sock. Me, like, me and him lived down the street from each other, so we would literally meet up at the liquor store and, all right, come on, let's go. So I would learn from him, but when I got down to the A, my homie Murph Dilly, like, he really put me on engineer. Like, the new sound that we had, we was ahead of our time. Like, two, I want to say 2015, 2016, wasn't nobody really thinking about the auto-tune like that. Like, it was there, but wasn't nobody using the melodies and turning up really, like, on the songs like we was so... I took that and I learned how to make it an advantage on my end because I'm a Latino rapper. You feel me? Like, everybody who knows me, they know I'm a Latino rapper. I'm a Panamanian rapper. So I had to learn how to capitalize and make it my own sound. So that's why now I could go I could go sing an auto-tune song. I could do a raw-ass auto-tune hook. Or I could do something off the auto-tune and still turn it up because I got to watch my surroundings and everybody I was with. Yeah. So that's how that came about. And next thing I know, I was, man, everybody in their mama want me to engineer shit for them, like... To me, I love everybody that gives me the support and tells me I'm a legend. I'm super dope at what I do. And, and, like, I appreciate that. But to me, I still feel like I'm not as dope as I could be. You feel like you can get better? I feel like there's always more. Like, I feel like I'm not where I want to be when it comes down to it. So when it comes down to engineering, like, I'm good and I'm the best at what I do, but I could always be better. But see, that mindset's going to keep you in the game for a long time. Yeah, you know, I I learn new shit every day. Like, going to different studios and meeting different engineers. Like, my homie Sean from Trust the Process, Rap A Lot Midwest. Like, me and him, when me and him first got in the studio, like, I would watch him make beats and I got ADHD. So, trying to sit there and focus on trying to do something with banking beats, I get a little off guard. But when it comes to engineering, like, it's like you're, locked you're in like, hold on, hand. hey, it's let me like, see that real quick. Let me, let me see. Yeah, like, man, let me see that. So, like, my homie Sean, when me and him get in the studio, like, it's a vibe. Bro will make beats the whole time. Be like, Bodine, you ready to engineer some shit? Yeah. All right, cool. Whenever you're ready, I'll take over. Man, next thing I know, we and him in there going crazy. I'll be ready to go to the crib. Be like, don't trip, but I got this. Just go ahead and take your ass home. So I like, man, like, that to me is dope. I love working with people up and coming. Like, that's my biggest thing because up and coming people are overly slept on no matter how good they got it because they don't have what everybody else got. They don't got that name that everybody else got too. They work with somebody that has a name to prove that. And I love to be that person. Like, all right, y'all want to sleep on them? Watch this. Don't try to hit them up later because now they're going to tax you because I told them to. They got no choice because y'all slept on them the whole time. And now you see how hard we going. And now you, oh, wait, let me see if I get something for the low because they just, no. Nah. Yeah. No, nah, y'all should have thought about that from the jump. So, like, that's how I move. So, touching on engineering and stuff. So, do you prefer, like, using speakers or do you mainly use headphones? There's a lot of there's a lot of there's different lot dynamics of different that come through. I got I got six monitors I got six monitors and a subwoofer connected in in my room. What's the setup like? Is it just like it's I got I got the Mackie tens. I got the Yamaha HS seven and the Rocket fives, all lined up, and I got a Yamaha subwoofer. Hell yeah! All connected to the the monitor station and the and the um the interface. Your shit be shaking. Man, I be rocking <laughs> I be rocking that motherfucker. <laughs> Sometimes. They they hate it when it comes 4 or 5 in the morning and they trying to sleep and we still in there loud as yeah. hell, yelling at each other. You hear bottles falling because we, we, we turn up. Like, we really turn up in the studio. 
do you think it matters how like what the studio is like when everybody comes in? How do you guys like really sit down and just like? To be honest, we prefer not to have a lot of people in the studio. Like if we have a lot of people in the studio, it's because the song's already done, mm-hmm. and we're going through the mix downs, and we're just chilling. But like when we're recording, we're in that zone. It's not we just want it just us because we get in there not four or five songs out. If it's a bunch of people, we taking all type of time because everybody's talking, everybody's interrupting, people politicking. Like, so we prefer to have it just one on one sessions and group sessions when it's just all of us because then I, I can focus on everybody's songs at that time. Hell yeah. So there's a lot of songs that you mix and engineer. A lot of it's SPG Cash, Dutchie. Is there any more artists? YB and the Mirror. Lil Fo, um, Jeremiah, Mark Dilly, um, who else we got? Um, Do or Die, Crucial Conflict, Twister, my homie Eki Soto. He he right now one of the fastest Mexican rappers like in Mexico. He just came and did came off tour. Um, Johnny May Cash, man, he rest in peace. Johnny P, like damn Ruga. We just did Ruga shit, um, Duke Deuce. Who else we got on the set? Man, we there's a lot of people on that. There's a lot Ten of people years, on that. Yeah, that's a lot. There's a there's a big catalog on Spenzo. Spenzo's my dog. Um, Fat A, J H E, Fat A. That's Ruga's artist. So like the list goes on. Hell yeah, bro. Like, Shout the out list, to them, bro. Yeah, the list goes on. So with that, with the FPG affiliation, what do you wanna? What's that like? They're my boys. I stand on that FBG shit. I don't care who like it, or who don't like it's. It's tatted, duck tatted on me. It says "Long Live Duck." Like there's a big portrait of duck on me. Like I stand on that, cause all this, all this extra shit. Like to me, this is gonna be the first time that's ever being put out. This obsession that these fans have with Dirk and this, all this shit going on. Don't get me wrong, the man is doing his shit, which he should stay doing his shit. But when you going in your songs and you dissing Wooski. You talking about duck, you bringing up cash, you're bringing up all the guys, and then you got your little homies thinking it's cool, and got the whole world thinking we not from 60s, 30s, okay? Like, bro, there's people that died for that block. You feel me? All this smoky Tuka, man, I, I chill with Tuka brother. Sko, my boy. Like, so when you hear that shit, <coughs> and them your peoples, you're going to take offense to it. Like, me personally, I'm not from 63rd, I'm from the west side. Feel me? I'm a, I'm a whole blackstone from the west side of Chicago, but when it comes to that, I'm not from 63rd, and you in the club, you know, I'm not from 63rd, but all your peoples is, and you know these your people that done time for this shit, that done turn their life around for this, but still on that, I'll be the first one to put on a shirt that says that BG. I'm from 63rd, bitch, cause all that shit, y'all y'all made it cool, y'all put innocent people at risk to be saying this Tuka shit, that we not from 63rd. Dissing people they don't know, like, that shit ain't cool. You putting people in harm's way, and just because you a bigger name and you got more money on that, like, okay, cool. Take your money and do something right with it. Fuck is you steady dissing for? Take that shit and do something else with it. So all you did, Dirk, at the end of the day, was make us rich on accident. Because you kept responding. We kept listening. Now the fans want to see what else we got going. And it's just a steady cycle, and everybody could just shut the fuck up. I feel the, like there should be like a difference in between like when you talk about a song and you're dissing dead people, you know, you feel like there's a like the dead not the like, dead not here to the dead, dead not here to defend themselves. So of course the people that love them the most is gonna take the biggest defense towards it and a lot of times it turns into the most wicked ways. When it all could be avoided by everybody shutting the fuck up and not talking about it no more. You ever see a feature like that? Nah. The industry feeds off of Chicago death. The shootings and and the gang shit, the the industries are feeding off that. They're making movies. They make they enjoy the songs off it. So I don't see it coming to an end because everybody's gonna chase that, chase that that scene right there. And it's fucked up because there's real people dying over this. And they view it as entertainment. And it's entertainment to other people. You feel me? Like there's kids showing off hundreds of guns and they and, and they gymnasiums. Like I'm a father. My oldest is 16. So to think, to to sit there and think like, damn, my daughter might go to a gymnasium and have a disagreement with somebody, and their whole team got guns sitting in the bleachers for no reason. Like that shit, rap. We always talk shit in rap. There was always rap beef. Rap beef would never go nowhere. But none of the killings and none of this gang shit really started happening 
till Dirk and Keith started talking shit. And when motherfuckers started responding, the drill culture began. So now people are just doing a constant circle of dissing each other's dead homies and making more dead homies. That's just how I look at it. That's my personal opinion, though. So with that, like, uh, what were you going to say, Keith? I was going to say it's a valid one. With that, with Chicago rap, since it popped off in, like, 2012 with Keith Keith and then it started coming in a little bit more, how did you, like, react to that? There's a lot of, like, in the FBG cash interviews, he's like, it, you know, it's a whole scene that's going on. Yeah. It's a whole brand new, and it's like, he knew him and stuff, and it's like, you know... Jump in it's like I was always around it. Like I said, I'm from the West Side, so my beefs are different. But like when you so cool with people, you feel me? You like a lot of people don't want to say, "Oh, I didn't. I don't want to inherit another person's beef." Or I'm not with all that. When I knew what I was doing, working with Young and Cash and Dust, like Cash, my home, Cash is the one that called me. Cash is the one that reached out to me and said, "Let's work." And I was always, I had Duck already tatted me. I picked my side a long time ago. But the thing about it was, like, I knew what came with it. I knew what came with that, and I wasn't afraid to stand on it because one thing about me, I'm going to stand on everything I believe in. If I believe we can make a way and I can help my people make a way doing something, I'm going to do it. So I always stood on that, so I was never afraid to tell motherfuckers I'm FBG. Like, even before I was FBG, I was still walking around with my motherfucking Long Live 3 shirt. You feel me? Like, Duck was my boy, and he was... A, instant legend on all his music because his music was bigger than dissing the man had real songs like him Lil Chris Damo Cash they had real songs but the only songs that kept getting noticed were the diss songs towards Dirk in them why because the industry was feeding off the beef back and forth so like when all that went down that shit that that fucked up a lot of people because it could it could have been his music could have been way more than dissing his music was way more than dissing. But his lyrics and his that motherfucker hurt your fucking feelings. Don't play with three. You're touching up on how your kid didn't want to be around a whole lot of guns. Now, you, do you fear that your kid, if he makes it into this industry and stuff that you've seen around, do you fear for that? Is it what's that like? You know what? Well, my kids, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a compass with them. You feel me? I'm going to lead them in the best direction. I'm going to guide them in the best direction I can. But they, like any other child, like we all make, we're all going to learn and make our mistakes. It's all how you approach it. So my daughter, she knows what the game is. Like she, she got her little popularity because of what we do. But she more into basketball. She rather hoop and play ball. And my other two daughters, they, they want to sing and act, but they... They got other shit going on because they see what I do. They see what comes with the music, so they kind of already on the... And we don't want to be like what my dad going on. We want to be like my dad, but we don't want to do all the stuff that my dad doing because it's a lot of... So it, it's a 50-50 it's a balance. Because it's like they, they like what's going on, but they also on the fence about it because they want to... I, w- I want them to do other shit. Like, I want my kids to be judges, lawyers, police. I want them to be something to make a difference. If they choose to take up what I do in the long run, that's cool because I know I don't got to hire extra help to take over when I'm done. Because eventually I can't be fucking 80 years old still listening to fucking music pounding in my ears. I don't know how how good motherfucking uh, hearing aids will be when it comes down to mixing out yeah. music. Like, I don't, I don't want to do that. Sure you wanna find out. Man, you know, I've already had a blood clot on my ear from, from the loud music at one point. Like... Yeah, man, we was going so hard in the studio when I finally got back to Galesburg during the pandemic. I came back down here, and when I got back, I couldn't hear out of my left ear. I was like, what the fuck? I go to the hospital, they tell me I got a blood clot sitting on my eardrum. So I was literally deaf in my ear for like a week. And I sit there and made me think like, I'm going to get old and my ears are going to give out on me. What am I going to do next? So my kids decide they want to take over. That's cool. But if not, I'm always looking for engineers to work with. Ain't nothing better than helping another engineer. Hell yeah. Fuck that competition shit. If it's friendly competition, I fuck with friendly competition. But but I'm not with all that extra shit. Motherfuckers being extra trying to look cool. That shit's stupid. There's no reason nobody should be trying to look better than the next thing. We all struggling to get to somewhere. Do you feel like people are scared to look out for the next thing because it's taking away from their back? It is. I, I feel like that. And I feel like they're afraid they're going to be better than them. Yeah. Like, there's engineers in Chicago that be like, I don't send out my whole session because I don't want people to have my template. 
Bro, you could take a template and flip it around 37 different times. Man. You could have a template one day, be like, you know what? I don't like how this sounds. I want to have it this way. Now you just want to flip your template around and the person that has the original one already doesn't know. Because you got to think about it. If, you, if a person sends you a template, are you automatically like, all right, I know how to use this? No. No, you're going to be like, what the fuck am I doing? So, like, when I send my template, I send a person session. Like, you book a session and you pay for your session and you say, look, I need all my stems and all that. I have to give that to you. That's what you paid for. Literally. This is what, this is, I'm not part of your label. Your label can hold your stems and your masters. I'm your engineer. You pay me my excessive prices for me to make sure your music good. And if you feel like you want to do it better, here's your stems. Send them out to a mastering company. So I'm not afraid of that. But other people be like, I don't want to send my, my, my template out because I'm afraid they're going to know how to use it. Or my template is my template. Like, okay, so you're going to send a b- bunch of vocals. Nine out of ten times of vocals that are there, even though you erase them, the fuck-ups are still there. So you're, sit- you're making an engineer sit there for hours at a time listening through vocals, through vocals. Like, okay, okay, all right, let me put that in. Nah, and send the whole fucking session over. Whatever plugins they don't got, they that's on them. I did my job. They gotta feel it. I did what you paid me for, so. How old were you when you got your first face tattoo? Um, I was 18. Uh, huh? My first tattoo? I was 15. I got my leg done. Worst pain of my life. I think I passed out. My cousin and I think I think my cousins and had to take me in the bathroom and throw cold water on me because I passed like out. Friend that did the tattoo? Yeah, yeah. It was it was it was this one dude I knew. His name was like Bleach or some shit like that. He was a tattoo artist at Humble Park. Like, nigga had crazy face tattoos. He was cool. My mom's husband. How do you feel about like face tattoos and like the back? I hate. Okay, so when it comes down to the face tattoo situation, I feel like there's a lot of discrimination towards it. To me, face tattoos are freedom. Just like any other art, we're allowed to express ourselves in the freedom of art. Like, this is what we have, right? Freedom of speech, freedom of expression. If I decided to get a face tattoo, that's on me. It's not hurting your company. It's not hurting your brand. It's not hurting your people. Like, I'm here to do my job. I got one job to do. I'm here to do this job, get us our money, go home. Why do my tattoos have anything to do with how you feel about your personal life? And that's just how I look at big corporations when it comes down to hiring people with face tattoos. Like felons. Like, no offense to none of the gay people or none of the, the, none of the community out there because I got a lot of love for everybody. You feel me? I got, I got family that does whatever they want to do and I, I go with my wife places. That's kind of odd. But if we could accept people changing their genders, changing their identities, what they want to be called, there should be no reason with a person with face tattoos or a bad history that has nothing to do with... Like, okay, if you got a felony and you were just arrested last month and you're on probation from, like, six years ago while fighting three other cases, like, that's a whole different horse of another color. Like, But if you're a felon and you did your time and you got your tattoos and you got a history and you're now trying to rebuild yourself, why is it any different than a person re-identifying themselves? Wanting to change. Right. We want change in our life. So... That's how I look at it. If I got face tattoos, it doesn't take away from my personality. I may be harder to approach. I may look more unapproachable. But when you have the balls to approach me, you're like, man, that bro, actually really cool. He'd be, he be on his own shit. Quite literally. So with all that, we got 52 seconds of hell. Do you feel like you should have some kind of like mentor or something to like help you through this process? Like, what would you say? That video right there, when that video come out, that that's about to set the bar before I dropped the shake song with FBG Cash. But I named it 52 Seconds of Hell because that's exactly what it is. It's 52 seconds of your worst fucking nightmare. We coming after everything. Coming after you. We coming after your family. We coming after your don't. Just leave me the fuck alone. Leave me, let me let me do my auto-tune singing, bro. Just stop fucking with me. Y'all just... The auto-tune has like a big effect on like the rap game. And like what's yeah, on because the the, 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 there's levels to the shit. And you auto, use auto-tune for the right reason. You're doing an auto-tune song for the hoes. Do the auto-tune song for the hoes. You're doing an auto-tune song because you're heartbroken, dude. But when you're trying to do auto-tune or drilling shit, come on, you just... You're a robot killer. So it sounds to me like a lot of this shit just be... Especially when you don't have your key and your tempos the right way. You just let them motherfuckers record anything. And 
I don't want to listen to no auto tune that sounds off. Oh, right, that should just be sounding weird as fuck. What the fuck? Well, what's the what's the robot from from um the Jetsons? Oh, what the fuck is the, 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 the that's what you sound like? That's what motherfuckers be sounding like though. They be sound like Jetsons characters. Weird as hell. But fifty two seconds of hell, y'all better get a tune for that one. That's that's gonna be epic. So what's next for FBG Bodie? Man, low key, I'm I'm engineering. I, I got a couple I got a couple singles on the way. I might put out one more project, but I'm engineering. I I'll focus. I gotta make sure that everything comes out right. I can't have none I can't have no loose screws. I'm building a production team, videographers, production, um, engineering. Like I got I got plans. I I might I might fuck around and go invest in some properties away from the city to open up a t shirt shop with some studios in it. Like, I got a couple things in mind. I'm just trying to put everything in motion right now, making sure everything works. Playing the blueprint. Yeah, you gotta make it make sense. And there ain't no way to make it make sense unless you try. Right. So right, some real talk. Ask for titties. <laughs> man, I, I, I'm an ass man. I ain't. You, you can have small titties. I'm, I'm. I don't know. I'm like my wife. My wife petite. Like so. I'm an ass yeah, I'm an ass man, bro. What the fuck? I'm not gonna sit there and look at your titties all day. I need something to stare walking up the <laughs> stairs. That's just yeah, me, though. I hate it when you go, but I love to watch you leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I'll be like, wait, come back. Yep. And then I <laughs> How you doing it again? <laughs> so. Funny as fuck, bro. Tell us about your meanest hotbox. My meanest hotbox? Yeah. Or were you just overly just like dumb? Man, last month in the Rolls Royce Cullinan, in, me and Dutchie, me, Dutchie, and Cash, you know, Cash don't smoke, but we went to the dispensary and we had just grabbed Dutchie. And me and Dutchie's the only one that smoked. We was in the backseat of that Cullinan. in. Basically, we rode personal backwards and we're just passing them bitches back and forth between the both of us, just frying that bitch. <laughs> we jumped out that motherfucker so fried. I didn't know what. I think that was one point point in time in that culling and I started getting um, like car seat. Like you're trying to Cause, cause, man, like yeah. it was so much smart. I started feeling enclosed. I mean, roll the fucking window down. And then I, for anybody who ever been a Rolls Royce culling and like you got to wait for the shade to go to the side while the windows rolling out. Like uh, after after your fit backwards, you're like, bro, hurry up, roll this bitch down, <laughs> get it down. <laughs> so it was like that. That was the meanest one, but. L.A., uh, this last past trip in L.A., I think me, Dutch, and Young smoked so fucking much, we didn't know if we was awake or asleep at some times. Especially once to No Jumper. No Jumper, we was fried. I think I was passed out on that car ride, too, because <laughs> we we was just packed. Like We was in that Cullinan. Then we had the van behind us. Then we had the Lambo behind us. Like, I was fucking fried. We pulled up. and Next thing I know, we're getting more weed passed to us. With the, you said you was out there with Kanye, along with FBG Cash, and uh, I think it was Dutchie too. Yeah, we was with Ruga, but that was that was also quick shit though. Like, that was also real, real quick shit. Mm-hmm. And then we all got we all got back to our business. You know, shout out Broner, but they be having their own shit going on. So. Oh yeah. So yeah, that was also quick shit. Shout out Ruga, 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 Ruga man, the man yeah. for that one. And his uh, No Jumper interview, didn't he say uh, he recorded something on there? Oh, something for Donda. No, nah, that was a uh, that. Or he took like a stem from one of his other songs and put it man, that was that. that man, yeah, there's there's a whole bunch of shit that like Ruga got a whole bunch of shit going on right now. So like Ruga Ruga just you know the video Ruga getting ready to drop the video that or I found out a second he just dropped the video to the old Ruga back. He got that. He got another song coming out called Turtle. That shit dope. And then um Cash got a bunch of shit. So like while we was down there like we put in a lot of work. Like we put in a lot of work and then it was just a lot of promo. We got to experience the stadium. Hell yeah. Like, we got to we got to experience what it was like to... Like, you feel me? The big leagues is different. Beverly Hills and, and going out there, like, that was that was different, bro. Is the weed better out there? Hell yeah. <laughs> when you go for an Indica, you really going to get an Indica. And I watch... I, I really pay attention to those fucking percentages because they mean a lot. Fuck around be like, I just want that. Next thing you know, you looking like a motherfucking dope fiend because of how high you are. That should put you to sleep. I still got a motherfucking cart, a, 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 a disposable cart. I still ain't finished smoking. Are you uh, more of like a indica hybrid or sativa? I'm a, I'm an indica person. You, uh, you like to be in the couch. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. I'm 
You know, I don't drink, I don't drink lean, and I don't fuck with, I don't fuck with downers like that. But why am I gonna smoke weed to be awake? I do cocaine. There you go. See, I don't really fuck with, I don't fuck with cocaine. Don't, don't, don't y'all get it twisted. Don't go fucking running off on the internet. Bro, D be doing the coke. No, but why smoke something that's gonna have you? You ain't Brandon. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so like you, <coughs> so like you said earlier, we're at the Grand Tap in Galesburg, Illinois. Yeah, this is my spot. For the Galesburg scene of music. Fuck some thumb. I want to know what your take is on it from what you've, like, seen. Man, I've only met a couple artists, and I've seen a couple artists, but I ain't mad at it. I you ain't mad at that. there's talent been... here? There is. I just, they need to step out their box. You think they need step to step out? They need to, they need to be able to, like, okay, if I can't get the right, if I can't get the right engineers here, fuck it, I'm going to take this little three-hour ride or... Go out to... I hear Peoria. I don't know. I ain't been to that studio in Peoria, man. I've Shout heard, out Polo Boy Shorty. Polo Boy Shorty in Peoria. I've heard 10K LaFleur. He's um, really good. Yeah, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't met him. I ain't heard of him either. But, like, you gotta be... Af you can't be afraid to stay... You, like, you can't be afraid to step out of, your, out of your element. You got to. That's the only way you're gonna get places. That's the only way I got places. Is I went to all the places people were scared to go to. Like, back in the day, we had Red Diamond, Encore, and Adriana's. Now, you had... You had to be one of them, one of them members to really get in that scene. So like, I was in that scene. I was Shauna, Do or Die. Like we was doing them shows. We was fucking them shows up. But I was never afraid to step out of my element. So I, I encourage everybody. I don't care how, how skeptical you think it is. Do it. You feel me? What's Protect your take, yourself. What's your take on TikTok? You think that's the? You think uh, that shit's fun? Who, who that shit's fun. Yeah. Should branch out onto that and be creative with that. Okay, so my view on TikTok, there's only what there, there's only two ways I see TikTok. Either you're blogging everything, or you're funny as fuck, and you know how to be entertaining. That's the only way I see. Only two ways I see on TikTok. There ain't no if ands or buts about it. Like you're gonna get on because you're funny as hell, or you're gonna get on because your music's popping, but you got the footage of your blogs and shit to go behind the release. So, but TikTok's me funny as fuck. I watch TikTok just because I be high as fuck laughing at these stupid motherfuckers. I'll be scrolling on that bitch for hours. Bro, I'd be dead. I'd be, like, be dead as today. fuck. They, I, man, some of them people on TikTok got a lot of talent for that shit. Have you seen the one with the dude who does the um, Haitian accent? Yeah. He's funny, bro. The Karen dude? The Karen so. dude? Back it up, back it up. Back yeah, up, up, yeah, up, yeah, up, yeah up, dude. Up. Hey, do the trick. He funny as fuck. <laughs> How he get his voice to go that low? Like, <laughs> shout out, bro, for that one. But yeah, he be having me dead. No, nah, you know who the other one is? The uh, um um, what's the kid's name? The 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 one that's always beating up his grandma and um and, and the one girl he's secretly gay. The the what the fuck? I gotta find him now. Oh yeah, bro. Yeah, I gotta find him now because he funny as hell. Do you think it's important to pay for promo? Yeah, you got it. You your marketing, your marketing is the mo your your marketing is the most. Your your mar your marketing is gonna your marketing is gonna make you who you are. Because uh, you like, what do you like? What this guy right here, Jason Banks. This guy right here, y'all. This dude right here be having. Yes, baby. That was a big. Ain't no way he fits in the car seat. I'm sure he fits in. That baby rides in the front. No, he. That fits man that funny as head. hell. That baby was not. Funny. I could watch this man all day, bro. He. That baby's in the ninth grade. Okay. <laughs> that baby's in the ninth Santa, grade. I wouldn't let that baby sit on my lap. I'd be like, you can sit beside me. You big ass baby. <laughs> <laughs> dude, funny as hell. So I, I, I fuck with Jason Banks. He funny. That, that, that man right there is the only reason why I started watching TikTok. Cause I. Who the fuck is this dude? Yo, why he really look like a little kid though? So like, but you, it's the way he barking. It's, he markets himself. He's funny as hell. He's a comedian. Like, so when it comes to like social media shit, like that's just Instagram too. What do you think is like the biggest platform? Instagram. Yeah. If you're an artist, Instagram. The way you carry yourself on, like, I'm the type of person I could tell who you are through your social media. Your stories will tell me exactly who you are. And I, I don't want to fuck with you. I'm cool. Because over cocky people, they blow me. I don't even want to fuck with them. I'm straight. You're telling me. I can't even do that. Yo, your ego will get you sent all the way home. I've given motherfuckers their money back. I told them, have a good day. Your music's not all that. No way, buddy. For real, that's just our issue. Like, people hate. To me, constructive criticism is a big thing. you got to be able to take that. A lot of people can't take that. A lot of people can't take that. So it's like, fuck them.
when it comes to engineering, how do you how do you view criticism? Like anything like just helps like when you, especially when you first started. Like y'all I, ever seen Hell's Kitchen? Yes. So y'all know how Gordon Ramsay is? Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. That's me with my engineering. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Like because I and I don't want nobody to take it personal, but I can't have them know one way or another. Yeah, you can I I I'm not gonna have weak ass shit coming out my, my studio. It's just nah. No weak ass mixes. Yeah, no, nah, I'm cool. I'm straight. Like I'd have signed the OTF for that. But that's just my opinion though. Like I don't I don't want no weak shit coming out of my studio. You ever listen to how many like you listen to all the music we done? I don't ever everything we hit is over a hundred thousand. Everything I released with cash is over a hundred thousand. Like, like, at the. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just doing an interview. So like, yeah, to me, to me, your ego. If your ego's too big, it'll get you shut down with me quick. I don't like egotistical people. Like, we humble as hell. Like, we all came from, like, we didn't wake up and just be rappers. We didn't wake up and be like, this is my go-to goal in the world. I'm going to be the best rapper. No, man. Just, a lot of this shit just so happened to happen because of what we we do. Like, I didn't think I was going to become a rapper. I ain't going to lie. And I'm not, a lot of people never really know, like, I, okay, so you go look up Bodine BD Mix, you see I got a catalog. But what do y'all know me as, though? But as an engineer everybody knows me as an engineer so i thought it was this time i dropped my drop my nuts and let them hang on everything i do so 52 seconds of hell is just the beginning of that shake some's gonna shake them up we coming back out to galesburg and if you're not at this party your ass better go to your room but we doing another party in july we're gonna shoot the video out here man shout out my homie mike spink my homie vic like shout out them for always being open and letting me use that establishment. So, if y'all not here for the summer fest, y'all gonna fuck up. Dates will be released soon. Oh God. Well, buddy, it was nice having you on to the local hitmaker yeah. channel. Y'all already like, know, man. I appreciate y'all. Like, like, this is crazy. That's how it's supposed to be, though. Turn up. Oh God. You feel me? If y'all ain't getting y'all video shot by the local hitmaker, y'all fucking up.